Individual single-celled organisms, like bacteria, undergo a run-and-tumble motion in a fluid. However, most bacteria found in nature don't just live alone as solitary creatures swimming around and hanging out in the bulk fluid. They instead form dense bacterial colonies along the surface where they behave differently from how they behave when they're alone in the fluid. In our paper, we study dense bacterial colonies and their dynamics, and we make two key discoveries. First, unlike run and tumble, dense bacterial colonies form specialized lanes and move very slowly. These types of materials are called glassy materials. Secondly, under special conditions, bacteria start moving like a chaotic and turbulent fluid flow. These fluid flows generate significant mechanical forces within this layer that help bacteria buckle, lift off, and form three-dimensional layers and structures. Our results can help explain how bacteria could take over and form three-dimensional structures on synthetic and natural surfaces like the lung airway and the intestinal lining. Whenever one of the cells in our body encounters any outside particle, whether it be good, like food, or bad, like germs, its first line of defense is the plasma membrane. This soft, flexible barrier contains a complex assortment of proteins and lipids that must work cooperatively with one another to either bind to or repel a foreign substrate. To effectively carry out these cooperative functions, these proteins and lipids must associate very rapidly and at rates that are often unachievable without help. In our paper, we develop a model cell membrane in which certain lipids associate via a process called phase separation. By coupling these lipids with the same motor proteins that we find in our muscles, we're able to accelerate the rate of lipid domain growth from small domains into much larger domains. Through simulations and calculations by my collaborator, Akanksha Gabala, we show that these motor proteins work by creating two-dimensional fluid flows to help mix the membrane up. And our results demonstrate that these internally driven membrane flows may be one mechanism by which the cell is able to organize its surface. Most of the time, we want to keep bacteria out. In wound sites or food packaging, dense and networked material helps to inhibit bacterial transmission. However, bacteria fight back, and many of them actively control their motion using self-propulsion. In our work, we study the transport of these active microbes through a variety of porous materials using a combination of both experiment and simulation. We make two key discoveries. First, in collaboration with Professor Ahmad Omar, we show that while activity speeds up motion overall, active transport exhibits a greater relative slowdown in porous materials compared to passive transport. Second, active agents are uniquely sensitive to surface curvatures. In a collaboration with Lauren Shi, we show that the activity and the ballistic runs make them more likely to accumulate and get stuck in regions of high concavity. Our results can help engineers to design new materials to inhibit bacterial transport, or even to speed it up when we want good bacteria to help us, like in the bioremediation of soil sediments. This is a cell. This tiny organism continuously interacts with other cells through their brush-like surface. This dynamic surface makes a unique time-dependent property. In this research, we make a cell-like particles and measure the force using different approach speed. Our finding revealed a fascinating trend. As approach speed increased, the repulsion force and relaxation time also increase. This is because the surface brushes do not have enough time to rearrange their position during the fast approach. And then, the particles go to the same equilibrium forces no matter their approach speed. Our research can help understand how dynamic surface impact colloidal interactions. A major challenge across science and engineering is efficiently delivering resources through the narrow and winding channels that make up a porous material. While this is a well-studied problem, our understanding is primarily limited to passive porous media, where the barriers to particle motion are fixed in place. However, in nature, we find that these barriers can move as well in what we call a dynamic porous material. For example, the hair-like cilia on our lungs display a rhythmic beating that helps clear out viruses, bacteria, and other harmful particulates. 
In our work, we study particle motion through one such dynamic porous material, an oscillating array of spheres that moves back and forth. By adjusting the oscillation frequency, we can actually enhance particle motion through the x and y directions. The obstacles generate fluid flows that direct the particles toward them, facilitating collisions that shuttle the particles around. We hope that our results will motivate further study of dynamics in traditionally passive porous materials. Understanding how tiny particles called colloids behave and interact in a solution can help to explain phenomena such as the stability of milk, the texture of lotions, or the effectiveness of drug delivery systems. In our paper, we drive a small colloidal probe through a colloid polymer suspension and develop a model to better understand the structure and flow properties or rheology of this multi-component suspension. We find that these polymer particles adopt local organization in this dynamic setting unlike its equilibrium uniform counterpart. Using our model, we are able to predict a non-equilibrium pair interaction between these colloids that exhibits both a short-range attraction as well as a long-range repulsion. Our work identifies a new mechanism for how these microscopic physical interactions can help to precisely control the macroscopic transport properties of the suspension, such as the fluid viscosity. Fire ants are good at scouting and gathering resources, but when a flood occurs, they form these rafts to stick together for survival. Inspired by these insects, we ask, how do you control a large number of agents to achieve various tasks? In this project, we look at self-propelled agents that we can turn. Think of a bunch of cars that move in the direction that they're facing, and then we can turn their steering wheels. We use model predictive control to control these agents, which has been notably used to control chemical plants and robots. However, model predictive control does not work well with large number of agents because there are too many agents to model. Instead, we model more zoomed out features, such as the agent density in a given area. Using this, we can control the agents to follow a target or to split into multiple groups. This work is an exciting step towards achieving cooperative robots that can carry out various tasks. Our human body contains about 39 trillion microscopic organisms like bacteria. Most of these microbes are good bugs. In fact, they are essential to our well-being. But when we eat that leftover pizza from two days ago that sat outside in the sun all day, we can get a bad bacteria that infects our cells. In this collaborative paper with Amar Sahu, we created a synthetic model of an infected cell to study how an invading bacteria interacts the cell membrane, the boundary of the cell. We observed that frequent collisions of the bacteria cause large deformations on the boundary of the cell compared to a healthy cell and could eventually break out to infect other cells. The motion of these deformations have a unique oscillation and shape change to them that is different between an infected cell and a healthy cell. Our results show that just by analyzing the shape changes of the cell boundary, we can learn a lot about the properties of the invading bacteria and how they move within our body.